Um, okay, uh, so uh, this session is uh, an AMA ask me anything for the CNCF staff that we got on stage today. I just want to do a quick set of housekeeping. There's myself and Mario. We're going to be running around with mics. This is an open forum. Um, I do want to just remind everyone that this event, like any other, um, runs by the Linux Foundation Code of Conduct. <laughs> Okay, um, but it is an open forum, and I have been told that some spicy questions are welcome. Okay, um, well, that's going to be up to you how spicy was the question. It's going to be up to you. Um, uh, as a note, in our retro items, uh, we do have for next time this is on that we should send out an anonymous form in advance for questions. We have failed to do so, so that's something that we might do for next time. Um, uh, but uh, what I would love to do is for folks on the stage to introduce themselves and then we'll get started with questions from the audience. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Sika. I think pretty much everyone know you, bleh, starting off strong. All you know me is Jeffy. Uh, I started as a Kubernetes contributor and now I work for the CNCF. Uh, hold the title of head of projects. All that really means is if projects need something or, you know, one side of the house is on fire, I run over and try and fix it as best as I can. Yeah, Hi, howdy everybody. My name is Taylor Dolezal. I'm head of ecosystem and I try to understand Jeffy's interpretive dances as he runs to the other side of the house and sometimes things are on fire. Um, I get to work with end users and uh, also got started in Kubernetes. I took a look a couple weeks back and I think the first uh, contribution I made was for a typo. So yeah, that's fun. Got You got to fix those too. Woohoo, typos. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris Anizik, uh, I was employee zero of CNCF and kind of helped uh, bring this thing uh, <coughs> together. These days I serve as CTO and mostly just try to keep the, the ship moving and plugging all the holes and making sure as many people are as happy as possible. But uh, other than that, looking forward to kind of hearing from you all and answering some questions. And he provides great direction as well. So, you know, yeah, plug the holes. Uh, I'm Amos Cavrata Perrin. I'm the director of developer programs. Um, and hilariously, I realized as we were doing some of the pieces around like, you know, trapping contributors, I'm actually not a Kubernetes contributor, right? So it's possible. It's entirely possible to be in the ecosystem and part of like the larger whole. So happy to hear questions. Happy to kick us off from here. Actually, right? How is that possible? How is that possible? <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> it, it's just possible. It is one of those magical things where there is so big of a space. Yeah. All right. Uh, one last thing. We will start with questions in a moment. However, if you do want to ask something anonymously, it's only not going to be anonymous because you can send it directly to me on Slack and I'll read it out <laughs> without your name, obviously, oh, um, um, as a heads up. Uh, questions. Hands up, please. Yeah, we got a question in the back. I mean, we can make up questions for ourselves too. Uh, so as someone that has gone through the onboarding process for projects um, a couple times in the last year, I've, I've definitely noticed that there is some, uh, shall we say, documentation drift um, <laughs> in, in what services are available for projects, certain processes. What is being done to address that and make that a little clearer? I will first off start by owning that. Thank you for the input around, like, this is an area of unevenness that we could do a lot of work around. So thank you. So we recently, and by recently, I mean I wanted to ship this just before the con, uh, worked with Tag Contributor Strategy to carve out an entire section in contribute.cncf.io where it is project resources. So internally, some of how the sauce is made, there was a website that you could only find, this is fun, only find by Googling CNCF project services. And I'm not kidding, there were no other links to it, at least that I could find, and I work here. Um, so then we found the repo where you could, you know, perform updates and we started updating that repo. And then we found out, oh, this has to be, we have to send a, a message to someone to say, please update the website. Like it was, it was awful internally. So now go to contribute.cncf.io. There's a link at the top for resources and that is all just like a normal website that we have. So we can auto update it. 
and we are starting to populate it with all the other sites and information that we had. And we're also trying to do things like add in a lot more of the self-service stuff that maintainers and projects can do. They just might not know. It's also not meant to be like an exhaustive list. Like if there's just something random you want, always feel free to kind of ask at, at, at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Exotic swag that, that Bob wants. <laughs> Did we answer your question or did we, did we get more questions? I mostly asked because Amy is almost certainly very sick of my service desk tickets. So, never, like, never, never, never. <laughs> yes, thank you. Questions. I mean, if you don't have questions, I'll have questions. Hey, I asked the same question to the Kubernetes steering this morning, so I'm going to ask you the same question. So, what are the axes of sustainability you are all working on? for all of us, um, and what specifically would you want Kubernetes project to do to make ourselves more sustainable going forward? I mean, yeah, maybe I'll start. Like sustainability, there, there's many different ways to, to look at it, right? There's like how, how stable is the project? Is it responding to, you know, security issues? Like there's a lot of things that we try to fund from a CNCF perspective around, um, you know, uh, audits, we even have employees that do non-feature generally related work, stuff like supporting, you know, Kubernetes builds effort. Uh, we've had technical documentation folks. Generally, we don't have folks that work on like feature or product related, you know, things. And so we kind of do what we can uh, on that front. Like we have 180 plus projects now, so it's impossible to hire, you know, one person per project in terms of how we're resourced and staff, but we kind of drew our effort. What the Kubernetes project could do and other CNCF projects is just try to make your needs um, aware as soon as, you know, possible. Just like any organization, we do go through like an annual budget planning type process. And if some projects are like, hey, we need help with our build or, hey, we need help with documentation, we could plan a little bit more um, in, in, in advance. I know Kubernetes does these uh, annual reports uh, amongst all the different kind of SIGs. Um, if, if there is maybe some ways to get like really what the needs are outside of that typical process earlier, if that aligns with our like kind of end of year planning, that would be um, useful. But I could get like, I could opine forever on this topic. Like the, the foundation, will, I think, I don't think we'll ever be able to like employ like full-time, you know, maintainers for all projects. Like we could potentially come in maybe in emergency situations and maybe have like a, like a fellow um, type of program, but that's still very difficult. You know, the only projects I've seen fellowships work well, it's like Linux. The reason it works in some ways is because Linus is like the, the you know, BDFL style, right? And so they trust him due to that Kubernetes is run a little bit, um, you know, differently. Um, but yeah, it's, I'll, I'll stop talking and maybe other people have comments. I think the only other thing, and this is kind of seconding what I said earlier this morning, we try and do a lot of outreach. And if you need help, please reach out to us so we can reach out to the folks that you want to talk to. Like, oh, I just got you wanting to go, didn't I? <laughs> just come on, yeah. If there, if there are particular organizations or companies that you think are not doing enough outside of like all of them, uh, or particular ones, please let me know because, you know, we, we've had a, there, there's been some funny incidents like, you know, this this KubeCon, for example, um, we, we probably 3x the amount of uh, scholarships that we provided. Right. And some of these were to billion trillion dollar companies in some ways that I think should be doing more to support their employees. And so we're going to be having kind of a lot of conversations with with folks to see what else can they do. So like, please don't don't be scared to be direct, at least with us. And then we'll kind of have the the. The, the other conversations um, with folks. And we've done this previously when we've had kind of issues with, uh, you know, etcd has been in a fun, you know, place over the years and we've kind of come and made uh, asks from our, um, you know, uh, members when Cortex was in a weird situation. We've also kind of made asks, so just please come to us and we're literally happy to have those like weird, tough conversations with, with, with companies. I think one of the things, uh, Dims, that would really help with that longevity of Kubernetes and really working with end users specifically. That's the folks that I mostly work with. I'll still talk to the, you know, super big cloud and all of those people, but um, end users are just, they're, dude, they're so busy. Um, so trying to, and, and I've had many conversations with GFI, with Bob about some of this, is just figuring out how to increase velocity of opening up issues 
tagging things correctly. Something as simple as that so that it goes to the right team. Um, and then creating some more information and uh, like programs like Zero to Merge, we're teaching people how to contribute. We want to show something past that where we apply knowledge from specific projects over, you know, at, at some point in time, hopefully this year. So that's the kind of thing where I really want to synthesize that information down and get that out to end users. Um, because as we grow projects, we run into discoverability problems. As we keep growing, finding the right thing at the right time becomes that much more difficult. So taxonomies, all that fun, not so fun process stuff that makes sense to get together, then it's going to be a lot easier for us to have fun once we get, take care of all that work on that front. Hi, friends. <laughs> All right, so I'm glad to see you all here, and especially Taylor. I don't know if Jeefy has informed you of how the AMA went this morning with the steering. I, re I read all about it. It was crazy. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> or if you saw the Twitter thread, because I pinged you a lot. EU um, and the EU. Yeah. <laughs> it was clear that uh, a lot of folks during the steering AMA were really interested in, in users and getting them involved with the community, getting feedback from them. Um, getting more contributors from end users. Um, so there were a few things mentioned earlier that the CNCF does with end users to try to encourage them to interact with the community and contribute as part of the community. And I was wondering if you could give us an overview. Yeah, so the thing I'm really excited about is our end user tab, and they're focused on reference architectures. There's so many conversations going on right now, and we're running into not so much of a problem, but just that uh, decision paralysis, choice paralysis right now. It's like, what do we want to work on first? And um, Ayla Lead is going to join me on stage on Thursday during that keynote to talk about the kind of why, what, where, when, how with the tab. So definitely stay tuned to that. We're going to go into a lot more detail than we have time for today. Um, but really that's the thing is, again, be able to provide those resources to help people understand the space a little bit more. That's the number one thing that I run into when I talk with people is just not just not knowing, um, it, like, oh, I've heard about this thing. I, is this the right thing? When projects release new releases, you know, V3 or even a bug fix or a minor, you know, minor patch, then um, is it worth upgrading? Do we wait? Those are the kinds of decisions that end users are trying to make. Um, then once they have that mastery of something and they've built that trust internally by iterating small to big to big to bigger, then they're feel, they feel a lot more comfortable with contributing and working within that space. So uh, yeah, lots of programs planned. The end user tab, I think, is the key to the future when it comes to the end users. And it gives us a place to route uh, context, complaints, feature additions, source gaps uh, when you're not calling Chris. Yeah. Uh, in the zero, zero to Merge program, do you know how many people actually ended up like contributing upstream? Did any become, did any folks become like actual? Yep. I, I mean, I know Kubernetes like, hey, I want more contributors, but I think in reality, you really want like full-time maintainers that are, you know, paid. Uh, at the end of the day. So do you have any like data or stats of how that's working? Yeah, yeah. So we've collected some. Uh, we haven't collected everything, but I think out of the 362 people, we had about 25 to 30 like get pull requests merged in. Far more open them, but they didn't get accepted for various reasons. You know, either it wasn't a good fit, just conversation, and that was still a success to people. Um, and then some people even switch jobs uh, based off of that. And I was like, yes, you know, that's, that's, I get very excited when that happens. Um, oh, sorry. Jeefy, do you want to say something else? Uh, a little bit. Really quick, I think another thing to consider is what is the bar barrier to entry with, with contributing to projects? Every single project is going to be different. Kubernetes? <laughs> right? Um, and we've been, we've been seeing this. We've been talking about it. I know Bob and others have been trying to work on this for like half a decade at this point. And there isn't really going to be a right answer. It's going to be a moving target. But there needs to be a sweet spot where you have a low enough barrier to entry that, you know, talented, smart people can come in and actually contribute and do meaningful contributions and grow, but also high enough where you're not getting folks that are actually going to be a detriment to the project. And that's kind of a tough thing to talk about, but it is something to, you know, openly address and accept. Because we all want, the, you know, this project, all of our projects, to continue to grow. And there's no one right answer for each project. Sparked an idea head-to-head. -head. This happens all the time. Um, 
when it when it comes to uh, I think it was you that that was talking to some of the zero and emerge people or I was talking to Bob or something like that and um, really just dialing into what people's intent is is it why do you want to contribute to open source because it's cool because you want a job like there's many reasons why do you want to contribute and be honest with yourself so that we can find out what how to make that happen right uh, that's the only way that it can happen but if you're trying to aim for something and it, it, nothing will connect unless you're being honest on that front too. And it's like, all answers are okay. We can find these paths. When it comes to different projects too, like graduated incubating in Sandbox. Um, sandbox, you were saying that like, you can have a bigger impact because it's not fully baked yet. It's still kind of gooey in the middle. Some people like that. You know, I, I like my chocolate chips that way. But uh, projects like Kubernetes have a very well-established governance structure. They have everything, it's like a lot more hardened, and so there's a lot clearer paths because they've been working on that for so much longer. So again, question the intent around what 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 do you feel like? What do you want to get involved with? Do you want the hardened true path where all the you know all the trails are worn in, or do you want a, something that's a little bit new? Last thing and then I'll leave. Well, not leave, you know what I mean. Um, I think most people here know George, so this will ring true. George had actually the best. Uh, description about this. You don't start learning to play guitar and then immediately want to play in Metallica. So don't start learning Golang and then immediately want to go and contribute into Kubernetes. You're not going to have a good time. So <laughs> that's that's just like one good example, but it really is a pretty good one. Okay. Um, uh, just to, uh, no, I know, but I'm usurping because I have anonymous questions, okay? Uh, <laughs> at N-A-T-A-L-I on the Kubernetes Slack, if you need to want to ask these, um, I'd like to read out this question. Uh, KubeCon and the Contributor Summit are the most important events of the year for contributors to CNCF projects, as they're a place where most of us can meet in the same place. Many of us are members of marginalized communities and can't safely visit places like Salt Lake City, so we have to miss out on that critical time. How is the CNCF thinking about that for future event plans? And what is the plan for covering gaps that will be left in SLC for projects with leaderships with leadership that won't be able to travel? I mean, it's, you know, to basically describe how, you know, events work, you know, from both, both the Linux Foundation and CNCF perspective, stuff like this event, for example, was planned probably roughly three years ago and, and booked and, and so on. So, you know, sometimes it's difficult to predict, you know, what happens from, uh, like a local regulation or political, you know, per perspective when we're evaluating at least Salt Lake at the time seemed um, okay. But, uh, you know, obviously things uh, potentially change. One great thing about what we do is there are now uh, four big KubeCons a year. So we do KubeCon US, KubeCon Europe, KubeCon India now, KubeCon China. Uh, we have Cube Days that are available with KCD. So there, there's, a, there's generally like, we are trying to build more of these in different locations to try to accommodate people in in local you know areas are we going to be perfect um you know every time no we, we we make mistakes and you know happy to take feedback but we are truly are trying to be very kind of uh, you know globally minded and regionally you know focused in, in, in some ways go ahead and and like i'll acknowledge that like that like this is a hard thing to be able to not be at like the same places so i mean gosh like kubecon in and of itself is kind of like it's really overwhelming. There's a lot to it. So I think I would encourage projects to also look at like like Open Source Summit North America and like kind of some of the other places to be connected with each other as well. So yeah, thank you for the question. Hopefully that hopefully that answered it. But we do plan two three years in advance, and you know we already have locations planned for the next probably two three years that I, I won't reveal, but generally in very nice locations. But conference planning for anyone who ever has been a conference organizer is. It's a ton of like underappreciated, you know, work, right? And it's hard to always predict how large or small these events or a pandemic comes out of nowhere. So it's it's not a, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but yeah. we're happy to take feedback. Okay. Now, okay. Now I think we can go. This is actually picking backing off something we were talking about earlier with talking to, you know, members when we want to potentially engage about something. Yes. But like. What sort of you know information, or like what is it that the projects could do better to like help you in those conversations and sort of like help encourage them to contribute and help you know with you know getting them onboarded actually as you know contributing members and not just sort of members of the the foundation. Inher inherently, well, it would. <laughs> 
if there's Sorry. like if there's yeah, it's a little bit it's 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 gonna be unique to different cases. But I'll give you some examples. Like, you know, there's some projects that are like this company is a huge user, they open a ton of issues, but they don't contribute uh anything back out issues are contributions but they actually don't contribute like maintainers or anything like that like so, like having surfacing that information towards us is is useful because we do like check-ins with members all the times and we kind of tell them hey you should go look uh at this uh so uh, sometimes it's even flipped over where we have like members will complain that like hey we try to contribute to kubernetes but the bar like like to jiffy's point sometimes it's hard to become uh you know a, a reviewer and a maintainer and and so on it's just very hard to decipher and then we'll be like have you been to a contributor summit uh and they'll be like no or hey i tried to apply but for some reason i like it's it, it, basically what i'm saying is like the more you kind of you know give us exact information of kind of what you're looking for um you know the, the more useful it is for us when we have these conversations other things i know sometimes it's hard for maintainers to allocate time for like uh, mentorships or like you know we do a lot of mentoring programs that we fund that tends to be very very you know valuable in ensuring that if your project could actually mentor someone and have them contribute successfully over a time span of two to three months that means you're probably pretty open to receiving new, contrib new contributors. We have projects that aren't good at that, and that's usually a, a flag uh, for us that we kind of investigate. But if you can make time and support mentoring within your community, that's always appreciated. But I know people are, you know, it's, it's a time commitment. It's like having an intern. It's, it's lovely sometimes. Hi, my name's Alistair. I'm an Oops. end user. Oh, here. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're good, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I'm an end user and I wanted to uh, come back to that because yeah, it came up in steering. Um, so firstly, I, I want to acknowledge the amazing work that's happened in the last, I'd say, two years around ContribX and making it easier to contribute and providing paths. That's, that's all you, that's yeah, not yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some of it's people like Taylor. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just write puns, that's about all. But things like making the docs better and yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, there is, in my mind, still a, a gap for smaller end-user companies who are trying to um, get support for features or projects that they use that, frankly, larger vendors might not care about or whatever. Some end-users are big enough that they can indeed provide full-time maintainers, as you said, the valuable type of contributor, uh, to, to take care of those things, and I think You've outlined the, the path to that. But um, one idea that was floated is, sorry, I've, I've skipped a lot of things here. Um, yeah, so one, one thing that came up was that companies and user members often think that their sponsorship money goes to projects and, and goes to supporting those things. Um, an idea that came up was like, what if it did? Has that been considered? And if so, what would oh, that look like? Oh yeah, it's there. There's been I, I think that that that's a story that's been told for a while. And when it comes to paying people what they're worth and taking a look at all this money, it it, it doesn't have that kind of benefit. And again, kind of like it, like was being said with uh, events and contracts and things like that, um, security audits cost a lot of money. Um, hosting things for bills costs a lot of money. So there are all these hidden costs, scholarships. Um, running events like this, where there isn't there, you know, there's a net positive, but it's not. It's it 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 just costs a lot of money to to keep these wheels turning, and so um, from what it's and that's kind of been you know I I asked him the same questions before coming to the CNCF, and once I got to see behind the curtain, I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of machinery. So when it comes to what um, that's why it helps us to get that kind of feedback around how do we dial in what the community needs because we want we want to help make that happen too um, the end user tab is a direct result of that where we were saying okay it's the three pillars of the cncf are the governing board technical oversight committee and then end users which is great but we didn't really have a body to handle that to identify gaps to be able to talk to to get survey data from now we do um, and they're focusing on helping deliver some of those things for end users specifically um, yeah, i think it, like you know, people may not be aware, but we do fund a lot of like work behind the scenes in terms of like, we have folks that work on documentation, help coordinate, you know, internships, a, a lot of things, but generally not like, 
they're usually more like short time focused kind of goals. Usually sometimes if there's, you know, previously we've hired some folks that literally worked on uh, Kubernetes documentation a while ago because it was such in a rough, uh, you know, spot that it became a board level uh, topic. And if there are things that are very specific and, and, and painful that could be, you know, uh, gapped in a certain amount of time, like we'd love to hear that. And we could try to do our best to, f f you know, facilitate either us coming in and helping a little bit or trying to convince companies to kind of pitch in and, and solve that problem uh, solve that problem so those are like legit dollars that go to things that do benefit um, uh, projects thanks we have a more anonymous questions coming in so I'm gonna keep it rolling at n-a-t-a-l-i on the Kubernetes slack um, liability insurance for contributors and leads has been a repeated concern now that the solo win CISO has been named in a lawsuit by the US SEC companies are scrutinizing their OSS risks regulation is coming how do we find pathways to minimizing risks to our leads in the past we talked about code of conduct committee but security response community may be on a personal liability path now too. help Yeah, it's it, it's a little compli like it's it, uh, it's a little complicated like if you're it's, it's like I need to call my lawyer but uh, if you're if you're individually contributing then then yes you could come potentially talk to us and we could go kind of try to figure something out but if you're contributing on behalf or working with your employer like you you it's your employer's responsibility um, at, at the end of the day and we have had this I think discussion in, in public where we did outline some guidelines for folks and if there was individuals that were you know contributing on their own or have their own little thing reach out to us and we kind of see what we could help but generally um, a, a good chunk of the contributions are coming from folks that are you know it, it's your like we necessarily can't necessarily be your lawyer but we could potentially help out folks that are individual contributors on their own we could potentially set something up but um, it is generally you are generally covered by your your employer in, in that regard I don't know if that makes sense, but there is a GitHub issue open where we discuss this. Actually, I think we, uh, I think, yeah. to my knowledge, I think we actually wrote this down on the foundation repo. It should, yeah, it yeah I think, yeah. I, like, you know, yeah. it's an anonymous question, but happy to be able to, like, yeah, take yeah. questions later. There is, there is a, it is, it, we do have documentation on okay. it. So. Okay, so to the person uh, who wants to follow up, uh, feel free to like, text me again if you need to. Okay, I have another anonymous question. Um, is there an interest to highlight companies, uh, we spoke about this a little earlier, um, that contribute to a pro project rather than those that are buying a bigger sponsorship package? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, it's uh, one of the acronyms that we developed at the CNCF was cloud native should be nice. You should have networking, impact, comprehension, and elevation, because this is a lot of hard work. Um, it's a very few amount of people doing a lot of hard work, empowering all of these hundreds of thousands of millions of people to be able to make these workloads come together. So we want to elevate you. We want to put the spotlight on you because it is freaking hard work. We're looking at doing other maintainer focused events. And one of the things that we've been kicking around is you can't sponsor it unless you're actually putting engineers where, you know, we're trying to put them. So that's another possible way where we can highlight, yep, you are actually contributing to open source. You are helping the ecosystem and you can sponsor the same event or this event that actually enriches the maintainer ecosystem. And if you have like award ideas, let me know because like, you know, we're always happy to kind of highlight, you know, come up with a new award. Like someone in the community suggested, why don't you highlight do like people who do documentation work and hence top documentarian, you know, was born. If there is something we could kind of say like about top contributing company of the year or like come up with maybe something a little bit wittier than that, we would happily, um, you know, highlight them in, in a more visible, yeah. visible fashion. Okay, let's go to, yeah. Thanks, sorry. Let's go to a real uh, person in the room question, and then I have more anonymous ones. All right. Are those coming from ChatGPT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> so kind of a follow-up to what Alistair was saying. Uh, we've heard from a few companies and end users that they don't really want, they don't have the funds or they don't want to employ a maintainer or a engineer, but we've heard from people that would be happy to employ a tenth or half of an engineer. How can the CNCF kind of like facilitate that with like maintainer funds that people can put towards that type of thing? It, you know, if there was a, a concrete case where there's enough companies that wanted to do this and pull resources to potentially contract folks that do specific work, we could, I mean, I'm open to trying something. I would, I would have to just 
get enough critical mass to make that uh, you know, happen. And the, the, the upside sounds like a great idea. In reality, I'm like, how long would, like I'm always worried, like how long would companies willing to do this? Are they gonna leave us you know, potentially with the bags to, 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 to kind of you know, handle if when things go bad? But happy, happy, to, happy to try it if, if you have enough. Uh, kind of along those same lines, uh, in academia, there are, you know, short-term positions, but they still commit to two to three years. We would need that because if all of a sudden, the, you know, a company pulls out, and I'm kind of saying what Chris said, but it, like there's precedent here in academia with, you know, short-term contracts. And I like that model because it gives you a chance to be able to say, this is a well-defined scope um, because I think that that's where I, I love the idea, but I'm also worried about like, I've seen you all, you all take on way too much when you get the opportunity. Um, yeah, right, right. Like, and, and I, I'd, I'd want to be very careful and measured really in terms of what, what does the company get out of it? What do the people get out of it? What's the long-term impact? Yeah, like, who's, like, what are the outcomes that you would want out of this? And having those conversations might lead us to something that could be doable in the short term, yeah. and then doable in the, like, the medium term as well. And I'm thinking medium term is now like five years, like, <laughs> scary here. So yeah, but willing to experiment. Let's see if we could potentially come up with something. But a lot of companies are inherently greedy at the end of the day, right? And kind of want to maximize the most they can without you know paying. And we see this you know, all, all the time in, um, it's, yeah, we, like with scholarships, there are certain companies that will remain nameless that have uh, are worth trillions of dollars that uh, have asked for way too many scholarships, in my opinion. But it, it, like. <laughs> I, I think what you're hearing up here is violent enthusiasm yeah. with tempered uh, wish for outcomes. Because again, I want it to be able to be good for everyone and not just like, oh, wait, we tried this idea once. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have the mic now. <laughs> as a note for next time, uh, retro people on the Contrib Summit, we need an anonymous form. My, my DMs are blowing up. Okay. Oh, I love um, this. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. 180 projects and counting. 84. 184 projects and counting. When does it end? What's the goal for the CNCF community and what happens when some of these projects inevitably get archived or abandoned? What happens to the users they might have? Yeah, actually, I think we all have different opinions on this. I, I think it's, th that's a wonderful pipeline to be able to have. So many people want to be able to come be part of the ecosystem and kind of stepping towards that. And I think it is a very, very good thing for us to be able to have those projects. I also think that there needs to be a pathway for, well, yeah, not everything's going to succeed. How do we merge? How do we like bring work streams together? Um, this is something that TOC is definitely focused on for the next cycle, looking at you, and being able to say, what do we do as we move forward? Again, I think it's great. I think there's some other opinions here. You know, I think historically, we, we, we just truly listen to like what our community and members want. And the TOC, which uh, some of you in this room are part of, um, kind of make that decision. When CNCF first started in 2015, if you go back to the original charter, there was this like, terrible architecture diagram that was part of it of like, here's what's in scope, here's what's not in scope. In the beginning, container runtimes were out of scope. Like, you know, we, we didn't have container, you know, D or Creo, any of these things. That was considered out of scope. But eventually, people decided that, like, hey, this potentially could be a good thing to kind of bring these in together and kind of bring some sanity to the container wars or whatever you want to call them at the time. And over time, we've kind of just evolved with our community members and what they want. So that's, I kind of see it as cloud native evolves over time with what people want to get out of it. And, and we shouldn't necessarily be, be static. Will projects fail? Sure. Um, that's just, that's just life. We'll do our best to kind of support them. But, um, you know, the TOC is the body at the end of the day that kind of makes that, that call or, or not. I think that it's uh, like, like, like we said, I like that we see our pipeline increasing rather than plateauing or starting to take a dive. I like seeing that not everything is homogenous and the same. Uh, different industries solve similar problems differently. Um, so by having this variety, you know, if a project fails, that can be okay. It's just that it's my hope that people don't lose that momentum and that energy because you can take that even if a project fails. There's a lot of things that you've learned, right? You understand how to work with the community. You understand how to work with issues, pull requests. That's not lost knowledge. 
Um, if you, you know, same thing with business. If you fail a business, you're not just, you know, you're a bummer forever. No, you've learned a lot through that process. So thinking bigger on how to apply that to the whole of the ecosystem would be, that's, that's how I feel. So I think it's good to see the projects increase personally. I think that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of thinking about project like, do we need that? Wait a minute. But I just don't, I just might not understand that. It, to people that I talked to, it's a core need. And I'll, I'll do the concrete example because I was so heavily involved in the container D, you know, rocket situation. Like we had three runtimes, container D, rocket, and Creo. Rocket eventually kind of got a Abandon maybe is like the nice way I, I, I could kind of put it and you know container D when it first came in the CNCF was actually um, You know almost like BDFL model basically there was one person that could basically approve or control everything but that project eventually Evolved and became healthier through its time in, in, in CNCF and now we're kind of left with two very very solid You know container, you know run times and in much better shape than we were before so I think overall end users uh, are in a better, you know, situation through that kind of competition and natural evolution of, of technology. Um, I forget where this ends, but I'm just going to keep asking questions until someone tells me to stop. Okay. Cool. Um, so um, I want to, uh, we're going back to revisit the question around um, travel to places like Salt Lake City. Um, and so this is a follow up there. Um, are you suggesting that all SIGs and projects get all the things that they need to get done um, that, oh, sorry, are you suggesting that all um, SIGs and projects get all the things done that we won't be able to do at some other Linux Foundation conference? Where are those conferences? What do we do if we can't travel there either? What is the plan? So, <laughs> events.linuxfoundation.org has all the events that we have announced and planned. Hopefully it's diverse enough where we can actually go and attend. but. Generally, geez. So, I don't really have a good answer for this. You know, this isn't in one of my strong suits. I tend to say things I shouldn't. <laughs> Chris, Chris wants to tackle me off the stage. We try to plan events as best we can. We have, in my opinion, having dealt with events outside of the LF and then here, one of the best events teams I've ever seen. Um, for the record, uh, we should all go give them hugs. Um, <laughs> not, yeah, not all at once. But here's a good example. Let's, let's use Salt Lake City as a good example because that's kind of the hot topic. If you look at news articles from just as recent as like two years ago, it was one of the most safe and lauded as the best LGBTQ city in the world. So we plan an event there. And now there's political issues just in the state, not the city, right? Or is it the city, not the state? Point is, completely out of our control. Now, what do we do? Do we now abandon like three years worth of work? We can't do that because we're beholden to multiple contracts. And also, think about the community, the LGBTQ, commun LGBTQ community that's there. Like, if we abandon that event, all of a sudden, how do they feel? Like, I don't know, it feels bad, but... I think you're more. You're ranting at this point. In some ways. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got another at, question coming up. Yeah, and at the end, it's like like we're willing to like you know if there is a particular KubeCon or other event that folks want to do something and gather, we're always happy to like accommodate. But please, kind of you know work with us and and, and let us know. Like we do probably 100 plus events a year across the world in the Linux Foundation, a variety of different geographies. And we're running out of time, so oh, right. we got a question over here. Sorry. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about what happened with Linkerd, but not really specifically, but more generally? Uh, so, graduation criteria, monitoring projects from the CNCF side, but also, on the other hand, from company side, like what they can do to remain sustainable. Like, if they have to do such steps, there must be a reason, and the reason is obvious. So, how can they survive as well? <laughs> so, I guess the question is like, what can uh, you know, there, there's as an organization, there's like only like we cannot guarantee companies' financial you know success. I think a lot of people rely on us to ensure that the projects that we host are healthy, you know, uh, diverse in terms of you know governance uh, and maintainers from different organizations. The the lesson with that one, like I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the the, the TOC, which really kind of is the arbiter of of, of that. Um, you know, I think with some projects, what happens is, you know, Linkerd when they first graduated, were in a decent 
situation, right? They met the requirements we had at the time, uh, what the TOC installed at the time. But what happens is after a project graduates, we don't really have um, what would be like equivalent, like a heartbeat mechanism, right? To kind of go and, and, and check on check on them. And some projects pr probably don't don't you know don't do well o over time, or something happens, or the economy changes, so they kind of get in a rough um, you know shape. And and so this has kind of been very active discussions amongst the TOC of like. How do we prevent this potentially from happening again? What can we do to improve this? Um, how can we potentially help uh, organizations um, there? But it's, I think it's active under, uh, it's active under discussion. Because uh, there's two sides. There's like the, the company that's paying the majority of the maintainers on the project, and then there are end users who are pissed off because they assume that any graduate in CNCF project is like gonna live forever and be the, the best in the world, right? And, and we hear it from both sides. Like it's a tough, <laughs> tough situation. Do we do we have a session where we'll talk about those points, which actually we discussed? Well, we, have um, we have a TOC Friday. meeting on uh, the TOC panel on Friday. Might be a good place to be able to bring this yeah. because realistically, like that is the body. Like you've got the wrong people up yeah. on stage for this. Yeah. We can speak to it, yeah. but <laughs> we're kind of wrong for that. Okay, we had other questions. Oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, hi there. Um, so on that note about conferences and where they should be held, right? Okay. Um, North America has three countries, but I've yet to see an event in Mexico. So what's, what are you going to do about that? that trust me, my, my, my heart is in Mexico for sure. I'm there <laughs> quite often. Um, the ch the, so the challenging thing is a lot of people, you know, at KubeCon it's always funny. I've met a handful of people already like, why don't you do something in Budapest? Why don't you do something in Vienna? And the conference uh, planning game is not easy for us. Like, If your conference is above 5,000 people, all of a sudden the amount of spaces start kind of dwindling across the world. And we also do compete with VMware, Red Hat, Google. like there's a lot of competition and, and timing is difficult because we do so many KubeCons. We need to make sure there's enough space between them. Some of the venues that we uh, uh, are trying to, to, to choose, like, oh, you could fit 30,000 people. Amazing, but your expo hall is too small for, for the amount of sponsors and project pavilions we have. So it's like, it's like the worst Jenga, puzzle thing to kind of, you know, deal with and, and expectations are high all over the place. Like if you ever, I know there's some folks in the Kubernetes community that have planned events and so on, so they can maybe sympathize a little bit, but it's, 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 it's difficult. We do try to rotate new cities all, all the time if we can. Um, but it's, it's like, it's, it's a hard problem. If you have ideas of like, you should tr truly go to, you know, do something in, I don't know, Melbourne or Sydney or so like, let us know. And like, and if the venue could hold it, refer us this and our events team literally puts it on the list of stuff they they, they look at but it is a it is not an easy problem when you have large scale um, you know events and sometimes we're like found the most amazing venue in like Lisbon but the dates are wrong and would be way too close to like another KubeCon. so it's it's a tough problem but we always take suggestions on places and events to uh, or event venues to host things okay staying on the event side of things why is contributor summit at the same time as co-located events many members of the community have to choose between the two or have speaking commitments elsewhere uh i'll give it to gp but like do we want to do we want keep doing keep kind of go back to five days total the whole week i don't know i'm, I'm open to ideas <laughs> oh, I was so one of the things that we're going to try and pilot at kubecon india is a maintainer summit i kind of alluded to this earlier now, the idea here is this is going to be a completely separate day before Colos, but it's going to have more projects, not just Kubernetes. But it's going to have also a lot more space. So it's going to be a nice single maintainer only. There's not going to be you know, a vendor hall or anything like that, just maintainers able to talk and collaborate. So we're trying to address that because one of the biggest pieces of feedback we hear every year is, I love the Contributor Summit and I got to attend the intro and one talk and then I had to run over to a vendor room. So we're trying. Uh, oh yes, just reading my phone and not paying attention. I just wanted to say specifically for, you know, as a, a member of the Summit team, there actually was an attempt to make this Contributor Summit happen on Monday and the venue fell through. Correct. And, and we are for SLC, last I heard, trying to do that as well because we had more lead time, but we do try and do as much planning as we can ahead of time, but the events team does kind of have to focus on the first event before they focus on the next event, so. <laughs> Any in-person questions before I get another and on? No, 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 no. Um, we're going back to the SLC topic. Get it away. 
are you saying, I mean, you wanted to, yo, yep. okay. Are you saying there is no plan and that already busy, marginalized folks have, a, have to figure it out for themselves? Uh, like, the, the plan is we are happy to accommodate. Please let us know what, Got it. what, what, what you need. Okay. Okay. For the people that are uh, asking, if, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the people that are asking about this, yeah. um, what it sounds like I'm hearing yeah. is that maybe what the accommodations that they're looking for should be sent to you. Uh, or yeah, sent, yeah, yeah. Okay. Happy okay. To talk about it. Great. I think I think what these questions are getting at is, what are the next steps? Yeah. To possibly solve this for future. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, anonymous questions at N A T A L I on the Kubernetes Slack. Any more in person here? Uh, Eddie? Yeah. Thanks, Mario. DevStats is rad. I know <laughs> I know a lot of people look at DevStats and and use DevStats to kind of show impact and show value and you know why we contribute and where we contribute. Um, how can we do more with that data? How can we like the top contributors and the, the smaller companies that are percentage com you know contributing are better surfaced and like change the incentive value of maybe they get, I don't know, like discounts on sponsorship or just some sort of other thing that we can like surface that. Uh, sounds like a good idea. Like uh, we were, we're always trying to improve insights. Like uh, DevStats has been serving CNCF for, for many, many years, including the Kubernetes uh, community. We're building some new kind of insights infrastructure too. Like if you have, if you have ideas like that, Hey, maybe top uh, new award, top, you know, Kubernetes contributing company of the year. And they get some discounts or something like, I, we love to hear ideas like that. Like we, we always have like crazy, you know, ideas uh, amongst like our little slack and conversations amongst the, the staff, but hearing it from you, we're more than happy to take it like, please bring the crazy ideas. Like we're like, and we'll build new dashboards. We're actually spending a lot of money on, um, you know, trying to build a new insights infrastructure because the, the hardest problem is, um, you, you laugh, but like, you know, figuring out a lot of companies come to us and they're just like, you know, very large ones are like, we actually don't know where our employees are contributing, uh, to projects. We would actually like to know this. And it's very difficult sometimes to track affiliations because sometimes maintainers just like whatever, use their Gmail or they just don't give a, you know, crap about things. And it's a whole other problem that we're trying to, to solve. All right, there's, there's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have also one. Okay, yeah, okay. Just yeah. let me jump in. Yeah. Um, DevStats is horrible to maintain. So I wrote, I wrote basically, uh, <laughs> I asked Bob to explain me how I get my employees into DevStats so that we can track it accordingly. The and yeah, then it yeah. was like three people told me three information. Like first one told me, go into your Linux profile, put your, uh, connected to GitHub, then it's fine. Apparently it's not. So can we, <laughs> yeah, can we fix this? So there's uh, I think we actually, as part of the new effort in uh, contributor strategy uh, for documentation, I think there is documentation of how to properly update your profiles, but there should be two locations, CNCF slash Git DM where affiliations are historically stored and uh, open profile that dev is where the LFX insights things, but it is a, it, it's not easy uh, at the end of the day. Sorry, Josh, you're gonna. Yeah. So. Since, since it came up, um, so we're being told, like, like I've, I've been being offered a lot of tools from the Linux Foundation LFX team um, to replace some older tools that we have. I mean, I'll actually speak as one of the people who helped build DevStats. DevStats is really at the end of its lifetime. We didn't know what we were building when we started out, and it was a much harder problem than we realized. <laughs> and like, if you got me and Lucas and a couple of other people together, to fix it, we would start out by building a new one. Um, the, um, and, um, but we're being offered a lot of things like LFX Insights, for example, where there's a lot of problems with the tool and the team that's building the tool are unresponsive to feedback. Um, the, um, and I'm a little concerned that tools that we have that are not ideal, but are adequate, are gonna be get replaced with tools that don't work at all. So, so I, I agree with you in, in some ways, like I, we will not move off of dev stats until the Kubernetes and the rest of the CNCF community would be happy with a replacement for sure. Like no, no question. And, and to Josh's point, uh, you know, we do employ, you know, Lucas and, and others that kind of work on, on, on this kind of tool behind the scenes. So yeah, tr trust me, like until 
Y'all are happy with it, and I'm actually happy with it. We're not moving off of, of dev stats, so I wouldn't worry um, about there. But building insights is, if you have ideas, let me know. But the, the question is, is like, you know, the communication between the team building it and so on, we could hopefully fix that. Like, when trying to push them to do meetings in the open, respond to discourse. But it, it's the persona, like, if you look at dev stats, most of the persona is like, usually developers, maintainers are interested. Insights is trying to like cover developers, maintainers, people at companies that want to know what their you know employees are up to and just it's trying to do a lot of personas and it's hard to kind of have like one ui that does it all but please give us feedbacks but we're not going to move off of the existing tool chain until the the new one meets everyone's requirements and i know kubernetes i know we're planning to get kubernetes potentially onboarded on insights and that start that feedback feed, feedback cycle soonish yes. yeah after yeah after after event 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 time for sure one, one, one just quick thing following all this, like I highly, highly recommend just adding as part of like your employee onboarding, go update get DM, yeah. go, go update open profile because that has, uh, I've had to tell a lot of people on how, how to do that. <laughs> Okay, we're at five minutes left until the end of this panel. So if you've got any questions in the room, now is the time to ask. I'm gonna go back to the anonymous uh, questions here. Um, going back to the idea of a uh, number of projects in CNCF, 180 plus projects is a lot and it's covering a large domain space. Are there concerns about the CNCF spreading its resources too thin trying to support all of these? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, I think it's somewhat valid concern, but, you know, each project's a little bit different in terms of the resources that require, you know, I, it, what's interesting is, like, I don't hear people, like, asking that question to, like, the Apache Foundation or Eclipse Foundation in some way. Apache has, I don't know, probably five, a, a ton of projects. Eclipse has three, four hundred, right? So CNCF still has less projects um, than, than those. And for those that generally don't know, we don't do too much for sandbox projects at all. So, so they're not really a, uh, a resource intensive things. The uh, incubating graduated projects, for sure, we do a lot more, um, you know, there, like security audits aren't the cheapest thing, um, you know, in, in the world. Um, you know, uh, maintainer scholar, all this stuff does, does add up. Right now, we're not worried about it, but there may be a time in, in the future, but we generally all kind of work together and kind of figure, figure it out. Where we, we really are trying to kind of build a, a foundation where we actually do more for projects than to just simply be like a Git repository GitHub host. So um, right now it's not a concern, at least from from my from my perspective, um, at least. Um, go for it. Oh no, we're we're gonna Minnesota each other. You first. Okay. So I was actually gonna say like I you have asked for feedback multiple times. What is the best way to actually give that to you? Uh, there's uh, surveys. We do surveys. Yes, please do surveys. If there's more immediate feedback. Well, I'm thinking like, you know, they asked for suggestions. Yes, the you. ideas, I would say projects at cncf.io. Yeah, and like, individually, like a lot of us, you know, like you could Slack, you could find an email, like even at, even at KubeCon, like I'm always happy to try to make time even though, you know, we have crazy schedules here. Like I, I truly try to make my, you know, calendar uh, and, and publicly stuff available and make time to talk to, you know, maintainers especially. So um, projects at CNCF.io, CNCF we, we all read, but uh, we do try to take time individually too. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thanks everyone here for joining, asking questions anonymously and not. For the folks who sent me anonymous questions, thanks for your trust. Go ahead and delete those messages. Um, and again, I really appreciate you coming um, and to answer some questions. I know Chris, you and I spoke yesterday. You wanted something spicy, so I had to, you know, hold up our end of the bargain. But at the same time, um, at the same time, um, I feel like what this means is that you've got a lot of concern from a community because they really care about this project, oh, this totally. space, um, and and I think that's a lot of the overwhelming message here. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks. Uh, and Xander, I'd love you to close us out.